You say A5? A5, X to the power of X. So can I write it as 5A, X? Third, okay. Um, minus 6A, X squared. Okay. Plus 4A, X. Minus uh, 8A. 8A? Thank you. Now, um, I got uh, BX cubed. BX cubed, okay. Minus B6X squared. So 60x squared, right? Okay. Um, and then plus 12bx. 12bx. Then okay. minus 8b. Yeah. Thank you. Cx to the fourth. Cx to the fourth. Okay. Minus 2cx cubed. 2cx cubed. All right. Minus 3cx squared. 3cx squared. Okay. Plus 4cx. Plus 4cx. Plus 4C. Plus 4C. Very good. Next person. Yes, um, I get D times X to the third minus 3X minus Okay, three. okay, slow it down, slow it down, my friend. So, so DX cube, okay? Uh, DX cube minus D3X. Okay, D3X, okay. Minus 2D. Minus 2D. Right. It's that simple? Yes. Okay. So, last person. Um, I got dx squared okay. plus e2x dx. plus 2e. Plus 2e? Or e2. It should be e, actually. You can double check that right there. Oh, okay. Plus it should be e, right? Yeah. Okay. And then all of that here, I'm going to over that here. Least common denominator, right? The LCD. Yes, follow it. Why don't you guys take another half minutes? Double confirm your work you get, right? I don't mean to, 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 to not trust you, okay? But double confirm your, your calculation before we go on. Otherwise, it's going to make the work go turning deadly with that. And that's the way how it is. This kind of property, we've got a solid method, but it, it turns out pretty uh, tedious. Sometimes. You guys all confirm? Yeah? Okay. So now we're going to regroup these things, right? We are going to regroup these into the, the different uh, separate powers. So I noticed we got, so the highest power here is x to the fourth, right? And then the, it's going descendingly down. So there are a couple terms of x to the fourth like that. Right? And I'm going to. You guys also need to help me collect those uh, like terms. Yeah, so combining the like terms we're looking at. Uh, I got A, right, plus, okay, plus 2A, plus who else being the x to the fourth? There's a C plus C right there, right? Okay, so A plus C, all the x to the fourth. Where are you at? Okay. And then now it's term comes to the, the, the x cubed term right there. So it's always plus, but then we keep everything uh, in the parentheses. It's so minus 5A, do you guys repeat? Right, and then uh, let's trace for that uh, plus B, right? And then uh, I have minus 2C, right? 2C, and then that minus plus D. That's all we got for X cubed. Did I collect it enough? There's a plus D right there. Minus 5A, right? Plus B, minus 2C right there. And plus D. That's what the X cubed term. Next one here, so now we come down to the x squared term, so minus 6, a is the plus 1, okay, and then uh, a, and then there's a minus 6b, next one there, and we've got uh, minus 3c, and we've got the plus e, very good. And now we come, so that's the x squared term, right? And now we're going to move on to the x term right here. So now the x term, we've got 4a, being the first one, plus 12b, did I read that correctly? And then I got the 4c right here, so plus 4c. Right? And then the next line down, we got a minus 3d, right? and then plus 2e. That's with the x term. And the last one here I have is going to be 
parentheses, uh, now I got a minus 8a, next one down, minus 8b, and the next one down, plus 4c, and the next one over, minus 2d, and the next one over is plus e. That's the constant term. So all of that here is supposedly over the, the LCD, right? You know what I'm saying? And of course, that exact same argument, if I'm going to keep rewriting this, it's going to take a lot of time. So the idea now that we're going to match that, right? We're going to match that with the, you see our, our beginning one right here was the x plus 1. The x plus 1 right here, we want to match that lengthy one right, with this x plus 1. So think about it, the highest power there was an x to the fourth. So we think about this here as 0 x to the fourth right, plus 0 x cubed plus, right, and then 0 x squared, and now plus 1 x, right, plus 1. You see what I'm saying now? And now we start doing the matching up things, right? So the, the, their matching coefficients have to equal each other in order for, the, for that to equal. So now I'm looking at... I'm leading to a system, right, that A plus C right here has to equal zero. You guys follow it? Okay. And now I have a minus 5A, right, plus B right here. And that's why I should have left some space here for myself right here. C equals zero. And now this guy here, minus 2C, right, plus D, that also equals zero, right? I got uh, the next one here, and that's my term, so minus 6a, right? minus 6b, like that, minus 3c, right? then there's, there's a plus e. Plus e right here, right? equals uh, 0 as well. Right? And then the next one down, I got. 4a plus 12b plus 4c minus 3d right there plus 2e. I need this to equal 1. Are we good? You can help me keep track of how I'm that down. Right. And then minus 8a and minus 8b and plus 4c and minus 2 D plus finally here the one that also equals one. So I got the system. Woo! You see that? Five uh, equations, right? It's it's all just linear. Do you know what I'm saying? No, it's all just linear. And this is the reason why you know one day you guys should arrive at linear algebra because they they treat, teach you the matrix method more intensively to solve like this. I mean it's it's a it, it's not a, a hard system at all. It's just a linear system, right? Five equations, five unknowns like that. But now that you learn about matrix, it's going to be a lot faster to solve. See what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll show you guys the matrix with the calculator a little bit. Otherwise, you can still do this by hand, but it's going to take you like another half class and then waste all of that time. Okay? And so, so with this system like this, and you can see that I spent some time obviously lining up, right? That the, the, the variable, the unknown, in a certain column. Like that. So either way, how I'm seeing this. So if we're using the matrix, you can produce the matrix as follows. Well. Similar to what I did yesterday. There's a, for the top row, we got the 1 for A, right? 0 for D, 1 for C, 0 for D, right? 0 for E, and on the other side of the equation, it's a 0. Okay, so I would just top row right there, right? Line up with that. And then the, and the, the, the unknowns are either columns, right? And then that's, that's why you know, the first column here for the first row, so each row is an equation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the way how we're setting it up there. And so now we the next row over right here as an, as an equation, then the plus column is going to be a negative 5, then the next column here is a plus 1, right, a positive 1, and then negative 2 here, there's a 1 here, there's a 0 for E, right, and then there's a 0 on the right hand side, right, it's that augmented matrix. And then we've got a minus uh, 6, right, minus 6. Now, when you see where I'm going right there, then you can also the speed up before, before you right, get, get the head of me right there as well. Zero, right? There's a four, there's a twelve, there's a four, there's a minus three, there's a two here, and there's a one, right? And now we got a minus eight, right? A minus eight, and then we got a four, a minus two, right? E, and then there's a 
one. See what I mean? Okay. And so let's look at this here. I'm so I'm showing with a TI 8384 calculator because it's standard right now. So hopefully you guys all have that, right? And then the, if you're using a, some some calculator other than, other than this one right here, I'm pretty sure that the, the manual has something that we would instruct something to say like, so I'm saying that. So otherwise, we're going to need to take a one separate course just to learn how to check the different technology out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can always make mistakes when it comes to me. So. Yeah, let's check before we get there. Which one here? Is the bottom right here going to be E or? It was whatever, one. Yeah. I don't know why I broke that. Okay, that was a one. But other than that, you guys spotted any other one? Did you guys spot any other error? It's, it scares me too when I'm doing this. Like, I'm, uh, no one feels perfectly confident with doing these kind of things here. Okay? But now, calculator that I'm using right here. So with this calculator, pretty standard with your, uh, pretty standard, it looks like yours, right? So here's how you enter the matrix. Okay. You can go second matrix. Right? Second matrix. So you gotta, you got to name your matrix first. And then basically you got to enter your matrix into the calculator first, right? And so the, the philosophy here is that and the way to access that, you already do the second matrix, right? And then you're going to access that. And so these are some of the empty ones, right? You can, I mean, this calculator, it, got, it already prepared a few empty matrix with names already. Right? All you do is just, you know, get into that desired name and then, and then you enter the matrix. And then so right here with, uh, with my matrix B, for example, I, I have some other matrix that I want to keep there, so I'm, I'm using B. If you have an empty one on A or A, go, go ahead and use it. But so up and down, it's going to select different names again, right? And then you're going to use the right arrow to turn to that edit mode again. See what I mean? Right, so right arrow. Right. So on the matrix A, you want to actually, so when you turn over to edit mode, you have to switch down to the name again. Up and down to switch the name. Right. And so now you want to edit matrix B over here. So hit enter on that. Right. And now you got to decide, hey, how many rows? So the number of, as a convention work wire here, the number of rows is, is the first number. And the number of columns is the second number. So this matrix we're doing here is going to be the five rows, right? With the two, four, uh, two, four, five, and six columns. Okay. So five, five, six. So it's right arrow, you know, back and forth between the dimensions. Okay. See what I mean? Okay. And now we're going to enter that. So the way how this calculator runs is it's going to finish one row completely, right? And then move on to the next one. See what I'm saying? And there's no other way. Or maybe there is. I guess it's a little more advanced than the older one. So, but uh, it's easier to just finish one row, right? And then move on to the next one. So you go one, right? Press enter. You can automatically go to the next one on the same row again. Right and then zero again. Right? Zero. And the next one here is one, right? Zero. Zero. Okay. And zero. Yeah, that's the end of the first row. So now we're moving over. Hit enter. It's going to navigate to the next one. Now be careful with negative sign. Negative sign is down here, right? It's not the, the, the usual minus sign, right? Negative sign is different with the calculator. So minus five, right? Right? And one, you know, minus two, right? One and zero. Zero. Okay, that's done for the second row. And now we go again to minus six, right? Just like the whole matrix now, right? So now it's a little good. That's why it's machine again. We gotta quit out of that, right? We gotta exit out of matrix mode for here. And then you gotta go back to matrix. So let's go back to matrix. Okay. It's probably our home screen right there, go back to matrix. You gotta do the math. You gotta turn it over to math again, right? And you wanna go and you gotta scroll down and find uh, the command call that's called R R E F again, right? You guys follow what we mean right there? Find the command that says R R E F. Pull it down a little more so that you can see the, the row a little up. Yeah. So R E F is the one we're looking for. Right there. That's good. And then you hit enter on that. Okay. And then now you're gonna so we can print that command on screen again. But then you need to again you need to access the matrix again and, and retrieve the, the, the matrix name. So second matrix, right? And you go 
I, I put that in read time. Right now I'm using the like that, right? Error. And I should do all the parentheses. So that means, uh, see, this, this means A equals that, right? B for that column, right? So that's 1B equals that. 1C equals that. Because everybody else is zero. So what I'm saying now? But then we don't like, and I don't like, I personally don't like that so much. So you can, from that result, okay, right? It's as an answer, right? That, from that result, you can go, see, you can go second, uh, second math right here. Actually, you don't go second math, it's just math. Math, you select fraction, right? You can try and do a third result if you do fraction. Right? And hit enter. That same matrix now is this way. It's completely fraction. So I'm saying that. Right? Now you have your answer. Right? Right? So your answer is the four the values A, B, and C. See what I mean? All right. And so now on your calculator, you found that answer, right? So now we, we found it. The work for you. We found the value for A, B, and C. A was uh, at least two, right? A equals. Uh, can you guys read it out for me? Negative one over fifteen. Okay. And then four over one thirty-five. Okay. And then. That now means uh, our partial fraction comes to so x plus 1 over the x plus 1 r squared, right? Plus x minus 2 r cubed. That will be equal to the first fraction here. So it's going to be minus 1 right, over 15 times uh, x plus 1. You know what I mean? Okay. And then you can write it as a 15x plus 15 in the denominator if you would like. And then the next one here is a plus, right? Now you've got 4 over that 135 uh, times x plus 1 all squared. Okay. And then the next one here is a 1 over, you can put that as a 15, right? Times the x minus 2. Okay. And then the next one here for d, you have minus 31, right? Putting that as uh, over 135 uh, times x minus 2 all squared. And the last one right here is a Negative one, negative one over forty-five times x minus two r cubed. Right. So that's how we're breaking it down with partial fractions. Okay. Look at that. Okay. And so I purposely brought in this way, right, this problem right here, for you to understand that there, are, when we have repeated power together, right? Do what I mean? And then you can do the calculator to solve for that as well. But that's how we're setting up the, the, the structure for that. So, as a generality, back to that template that I was showing yesterday, and you can continue writing some down some more general cases here. So when our when our rational P of X, right, over all distinct linear factors like a some A one X plus B one, right? A two x plus b two right plus so on and so on. I mean times when when you factor that into the thing, and so you've got to always factor your your, your denominator. So a n plus I mean a n times x plus uh, b n. Then you definitely have to go uh, a one over a one x plus b one. Right? A two over a one I mean a two x plus b two so on and so on. Right. Getting at a n over a n x plus b n. Okay. And then the case we just did here, the case we just did here, let's say we got some rational where the numerator is some something, right? Some polynomial, and in the denominator, let's say you got some a1 x plus b1, but raised to some power p r1. That's what it, that's what it meant by repeated. You see what I'm saying there? Okay. And then the, there's some a two x b two another see as far as this thing these are the distinct but then each one of these is being repeated so that's the idea of that and then raise to some power r two and etc etc okay. and then we 
looking at uh, some a, a n x plus e n, right? some n distinct factor, but they, they're all having some powers, right? That's the idea right there. So the way we work with that, it's going to get a little lengthy right here, but we go, we go to a1, right, over a1x plus b1, power 1 at plus, plus, and then how about, let me call this a1, 1, okay? It's kind of like a, a double, uh, okay, plus a, a2, 1, like that, over 2x, squared, plus, right, up to, so these are all meant to be different coefficients. Keep adding up and we keep moving over to the next guy. We right, do that until we finish out all of those repeats, which is factors. Right? Okay. So now let's uh, look at the, the next example here, where I want to show there could be time that our denominator has an irreducible quadratic. Talking about the, the factoring in the denominator, sometimes we run into the, some irreducible quadratic. So just a quick brief back for you guys in, in your uh, your pre-calculus. What does that mean by an irreducible quadratic? Like say something like this is a quadratic, right? And it's irreducible in the sense that you can no longer factor this thing right here. You won't say because of this quadratic can no longer be factored. Or can no further be factored. You won't say no, that's what it means by an irreducible quadratic. Do you still remember a way to check whether your uh, your quadratic is an irreducible one? Meaning no further factor, no longer can be factored? Like, you gotta, like like that one, how, how can I tell that that you can no longer factor or something like this? How do I know it, it, it doesn't factor any further? And it has to stay as a final quadrant like that. It's called the usual. Yes, you're very close. So not the complete quadratic equation though. You check this thing right here, the B square minus four AC. Right. If this thing here is a negative, then, right? Then you are quadratic. Of course, I'm talking about the quadratic in the real numbers. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't do imaginary number or anything like that here for calculus. So as long as your b squared minus 4ac is negative, right? Your quadratic here stops there. Can no longer, can no further be factored. You know what I'm saying? Huh? So anytime you have, you have this, right? That leads to your quadratic, right? Is irreducible. That's the term. That's the term for it. Irreducible means uh, can no no longer be factored, right? Can be no longer factored. Sounds good. It's saying that answer. You want to say So let's look at something like this. Right? And it's just a demo problem right here. But uh, how about a two x minus three, right? And then you got it x minus one times uh, x squared plus one, for example. Right? And indeed. Let's call this our example two. So, in example two, we have this following instruction we here. Find partial fractions. Right? And I'm going to be using exactly that uh, function here, that uh, expression here. All right. To do this problem right here, and I need space, so that's why I have to rush like erase this right here. But to work on this problem now, see, we got this is linear, right? And now you also learn how to handle linear with repeat. But this problem right here, your linear is the only one, right? You got one linear and then one irreducible, irreducible quadratic, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm being pretty irreducible. So the rule of thumb now is that for the linear, you always put just a coefficient. So x minus 1, right? You just put the <coughs> coefficient there. But then now when it comes to, I mean, you, that's pretty much done with your 
linear factor, right? Because your linear fa factor does not have any repeat. So it just stays like that, A over the X minus 1. But then for when now when you move over to that irreducible factor right there, you need a, a linear thing, a Bx plus C yeah, on top of your irreducible. See what I'm saying now? Right. So unlike the unlike the, uh, the the linear factor, we only need one coefficient on top. Now for the irreducible quadratic, you need you definitely need a, a linear with unknown coefficient on top of that. And then we saw for the A, the B, and the C. All with my uh, explanation so far. And then of course I'm not going to get too far into that because I want to focus on this problem. But think about a what if. Right? Take note of this. What if the problem here in the beginning was a what if it was a 2x minus 3, whatever the numerator was, but you go to x minus 1, and there's a repeat in your linear. See what I'm saying? Now? There's a repeat, repeat in your linear, and then it involved a, involved a, a, a irreducible. Then here's how you're setting it up. You need one coefficient over the x minus 1. Okay? And then you need another coefficient on the x minus 1 squared, just like the way how we usually handle the, 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 linear, the repeated linear factors. So then we need a, another one right? in a linear setting between cx plus d, but over your irreducible quadrant. That's how it's set up right now. I hope you guys start getting a generality out of, out of that. So it, and so in that way, now I'm just pointing out what if for here. When you, as we're done taking note, I'm just going to clear this out. Right? So back to this one that we're in the middle of. Back in this one that we're in the middle of, then think about if we really adding up together, right? And so a has to multiply with x squared plus one, right? And uh, the x minus one must multiply with uh, the dx plus c. You guys good? Right. And we divide that by the, the LCD, right? The LCD is just really that beginning denominator. Right. And so that way, now I'm looking at uh, right here. I have uh, a x squared, right? Plus a plus now we're gonna take time pointing that out so that's making it b x squared right plus c x right there minus b x right minus c all over your L C D. And then we're gonna recombine the like terms, right? So the square terms here, you got a plus b going with the square term, x squared, and then the c the, the, the x terms go. I like having it alphabetically sorted out, so minus b plus c. So the x term, and then the last one here is an a minus c. Actually, we put this all over the LCD. I'm saying that. And so, but then, and once you've re-added them right, like that, well, once you have finished re-adding them, then it's just like that. We want, think of this one here, your combined one has to have a square term, right? And your linear here goes like, like I mean, your numerator is in the way how it currently looks. Think of that as a 0x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, and now we're going to start doing the, the coefficient matching. Okay. Right. So we're matching up with the coefficients. And so that means we're leading to a plus b okay, has to equal 0. Yeah, and then we lead to minus b okay, plus c right here has to equal 2. Right. And then the last one right here, we got a Minus c right, has to equal minus three. See what I'm saying now? We set up for ourselves a system, a linear system again, a three equation, and three unknown. Okay. And then at this point, you're using your your the, the, the matrix or using your whatever by hand method, right? It's, it's all gonna be good. Right. And so at this point right here, you guys, uh, that you got, you can take your uh, different uh, methods to have that uh, system of linear equation solved, right? We we got something a little bit. Less complicated than the, the earlier example that we've done, right? So three unknowns, uh, three equations, three unknowns, they're all linear equations. And so in that way, now, maybe we just learned about a matrix not uh, not too long ago. So let's use a matrix again with the calculator, and, and that's pretty much all your choice. So think about it. If I would be testing you on, on, on this kind of problem right here, then all you need to show is how you arrive at that system. How you solve that system to get your A, B, and C, and D value, that's pretty much your choice. Okay? You just simply throw me a line and this is what I did, or this is what I, I didn't do, something like that, right? But uh, I don't really need you to show your work for solving this system, because it's, it's not really that relevant. So, so your matrix here is going to be like a 1, 1, 
uh, zero and zero on the other end, right? And then the next row down is going to be a zero minus one, one, and two. And then the last row is a one, a zero, negative one, and negative three. All right, so go ahead and uh, use your matrix okay, or whatever. Okay, you can go with the, you can also stay with the traditional the, the elimination method or the substitution method. Okay, get that. You also learn that uh, that trick on the calculator, how you can turn your final answer into fractions, right? It's better that way as well. So, I'm ready to hear some answer. Um, for A, I uh, got negative one half. Negative one half. Okay. Beautiful. And B, I got fraction. one half. Positive one half. Thank you. And then C, I got uh, five over two. Five over two. Sweet. Right. You can double convert. Thank you. So anyway, so on my board right here, that 2x minus 3 right, over x minus 1 times x squared plus 1. Now the partial fractions for these, okay, the, partial, the partial fractions for these is, so a was a 1 half, so a minus 1 half actually, so it's, we're writing that as a minus 1 right, over 2 times x minus 1. Okay, following. Okay. And then the other one, now, so keep in mind that the, the b and the c, they are they are, you know, part of that linear on top of our irreducible quadratic, right? So we're looking at uh, the basic. Technically, it was a one half x plus a five half, all over uh, x squared plus one. Okay, no. so, so this is the the, the original idea with it. But then we can purposely, you know, put that common denominator in it, two down to the bottom, right? So my final expression here: negative one over two x minus two. That's for the plus term. And plus, here we have just x plus 5 all over 2x squared plus 2. Pretty good. Okay. These are the partial fractions of that. Okay. Do what I'm saying, no? Okay. So the general formula for the starting point here, the general formula for the starting point is that uh, when you have a polynomial, right? I mean, a, a Rational expression where top is a polynomial, lower degree than the bottom. Remember, the technique we're doing here is only specifically meant right, for those rational expressions where the degree on top is lower. Okay. And then once we have factored our denominator, so we're going to recognize a couple of the linear and maybe included some repeat as well. Right? Or maybe I'm, let me say uh, some AX1. A1x, B1, right? some linear, distinct linear, right? A2, X, B2, so on and so on, right? A few of those linear. And then we got a few irreducible part, right? Say the, there's a G1x squared plus uh, F1x plus G1, right? Assuming these are irre irreducible. Then there's another b2 x squared plus f2x plus g2, etc., etc. And that way, the general starting point here, when we start with that, what we need is, once again, produce a dog a1 over a1x b1. So each of the distinct linear factor gets a coefficient on top of that, right? And then if we got even repeat, and we keep increasing the power higher and higher. And then there's a a2 over a x plus b2. And then we keep doing that, and then we switch over to those uh, irreducible quadratic. Yeah. I'm going to go with the, let's say we've got some uh, e1, right? We have my b1 x plus c1. That's for 1x squared plus 1x plus g1. Plus, there's going to be 2x plus c2. It's always not going to have to be linear over your distinct irreducible quadratic. Right. So on and so on. That's how it's done. Okay. I hope the problem right here just demonstrated the idea of how we handle the uh, the case that we got some some uh, the 
irreducible quadratic factorize that well. And so it may go a little while for the next one I'm about to bring in right here. So in that generality, let's let's think about what if we have three square and then x square. Some of these guys got repeats, right? So the way how we starting with that as a just for you to get comfortable with the setting up, uh, the, the the starting setting up for here. Then see we got distinct uh, we got as as far as the distinct factor we got some li linear factor, right? And then some irreducible quadratic. And so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna have I'm gonna need a over right x minus three, but just the lowest power, right? And then I'm gonna produce another one. B over the x minus three all square again. Right. See that that exact repetitive pattern that we've done before, and then we got some linear, right? Cx plus d over x square plus x plus one right? plus power, and then I'm doing it again for there's a dx plus f. Right. So these are all the co uh, the unknown coefficients. X square plus x plus one. Where yeah. well, that's how we started with that. Okay. And then uh, yes, as far as recombining up A, right? We multiply with one more x minus three. And then we multiply with the x square plus x plus one square. Okay. That's what we multiply with the coefficient A. So for the B right here. B right here was already on top of the x minus 3 all squares. So I'm going to just multiply that with x squared plus x plus 1 all squared. And then for this, cx plus d right here, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm rushing step a little bit, right? I'm, I'm combining like terms and I mean, I'm multiplying, making the denominator and putting that all in one fraction right at this point right now. <clears throat> so we've got cx plus d. So cx plus d was already on top of that x squared plus x plus 1. So I need to multiply with x minus 3 all squared and one more irreducible factor, etc., etc. Okay. And then the next one I have here is going to be dx plus f. Okay? I need to multiply that with simply x minus 3 all squared. Okay. And then all of that is over my LCD, I delete the common denominator. Right. And then, why don't you guys take some time uh, factoring out and foiling out all of these right here and recombine my terms for you? Okay. Yes, it will take some time a little bit. Okay. So, you guys finished? Yeah. So, I hope it's right. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, so this is just for demonstration purpose, for learning purpose only, but of course, I wouldn't put a problem like this on tests and things like that. <laughs> Kills a lot of our time, right now, our valuable time. Okay, can I assume that you got some uh, results for me? Straight up, so we can see if we got some Sure, you can say you can go for the first one and not. Okay, okay. Uh, so I got A over 2x plus 3 all squared. Okay. Uh, plus 1 over 2x squared. Minus 5ax minus 3a. So it looks like that's the FOIL version of that. Right? Yes. Okay. And then what so else did you have? Wait, would you prefer the last a? Should be a, should be a minus 3a somehow. Because when you square that, that last coefficient is going to be a 1 and it would multiply with a 3. Right? And then there's an a multiplying it. So I, But even if it's off a little bit, that's that's not too important. You know, I mean, it's just the point is getting the, the, the general idea of the problem. Okay, go ahead and answer that. Work anymore. What is that? I don't trust my work anymore. Some of these problems, see, surprisingly, algebra is no joke. Right? It's, it's, okay. And then I got bx to the fourth mm -hmm. plus two bx cubed. Bx cubed plus three bx squared. Three. B x squared plus 2bx. 
X. So why are we reading so much? So I'm going to move to the other board. So let's combine like terms. This is probably the reason why, you know, back a little while ago, these problems were so common. And, you know, as, and then as time went on, you know, they, they keep taking it out of the teaching criteria. Okay, so as the, so the highest power we got was the fifth power, right? So, sorry. Yeah, actually, let me go ahead and combine those right here. I got the first one. A, I could have done that up here. A plus B plus B. That's our polynomial. That means now we're equating that, so comparing that with the, the original, all this here, we want that to equal x to plus 4, right? So x plus 4 here, the, the fifth power of x is a zero coefficient. So that means we got, we, got, we produce an a plus c, right, to equal zero. And now I, I, I'm, I'm running out of time to align these in columns, so the minus a plus b minus 5c plus d on the x squared, I mean, on the actual the first term, that will also be equated to zero. The, the cube, the cubic, right? Minus b a plus two b plus four c minus five d plus e, right? That also equals zero. The x squared term minus seven a plus three b right? plus three c plus four d minus six d and uh, plus f, right, got also equal to zero. This, like the one right here, minus 5a, plus 2b, plus 9c, plus 3d, plus 9e, minus 6f, that must equal 1 this time. Then the last one right here has to be equal 4. So minus 3a, plus b, plus 9 I don't think we need to continue any further into that. I mean, that's just the point is once we found that those small efficiencies, right? That's how we get it today. The, the, the partial graph. Okay. See what I'm saying? So I brought this in just for you to have a, an understanding of what we should do. You see, when I was going to graduate school and, and, and taking linear algebra, mostly linear algebra, it's all about we learn how to handle matrices, right? And there are people 
who didn't take the class and they, they, they were trying to make jokes and hey, so what do the linear people, I mean, the linear algebra people would do? But they, they were asking me those questions. And then they came up with kind of, kind of joke, like, you guys trying to go and use like 100 matrix, like 100 by 100? I mean, at that time it was a joke, but think about the actual work. Someday, right? Someday you may produce a matrix, like here, it's a lot bigger than that. This is already what? Uh, how many variables do we have? It's already like, that many, right? A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? And six by six by six, we get a few so you know. Okay, so expectantly, it need, it, of course, matrix being 100 by 100 is does happen sometimes, right? It's not just like a we're making up for a, for a joke or something like that. Anyway, so now after all of that work about the partial partial fraction, so now we're gonna come back to doing the integration work right here. So the whole idea is this is just the algebra set to break down our partial fraction. Here, now things are going to be example four right here, right? Now we're going to evaluate, right? I'm going to only play the, the short one right here. So we've got an integral, right? And then there's a. Uh, integral, right? And so the partial fraction this time goes up, right? And when I brought in this problem right here, definitely right from the beginning that it was not in fact a form for your rational, right? And you got to spend some time factoring out your denominator. So think about the x over x squared minus 3x plus 2, right? It's a rational expression. Yes, it's equal in fact a form the denominator the denominator becomes uh, x minus 2 times uh, x minus 1. Is everybody with me? Okay. And so in that way, now we can go ahead and use a partial fraction. So I'm going to take some space here and think about we want this to become the a over x minus 2. So it's all in that case of the state linear factors, right? And then plus some b over x minus 1 right there. And then this process now should be fast. So we got a uh, times x minus 1, right, plus b times uh, x minus 2. One, and we, so and that's leading further into uh, a plus b, right, times the x term, and then you got plus and minus a minus 2b. Yeah. You guys can double check with me on that. So I, I, Distributed and then I recombine like terms as well. So that leads to and making this equal to making this equal. So that leads to a system right here. See, our numerator was a one x plus zero, right? So that means we're looking at uh, a plus b right? equals one and uh, minus a minus two b to equal zero like that. So I can easily use the substitution. So Right here, it's making it a equals uh, minus 2b, right? And the minus 2b can be substituted for the, the other equation we get. That will lead to minus b equals 1, okay? or b equals a negative 1. Okay? You know that? Right. And then you are a, now we will become this way, and we So now we come back to our, so that's the partial fraction decomposition work, right? Now, means we come back to this integral and making that rational expression here uh, into 2 over, so remember 2 was that coefficient we put over the x minus 2. Now that's right, x minus 2 plus, right, we have another, or actually no more plus, now it's a negative, so minus 1 over x minus 1. Now that's a much easier integral where we can do things uh, term by term. Right? So in that way right here, in my next step for, for the integral, now it's going to be 2 times the natural log of x minus 2, and then minus the natural log of x minus 1. That's how I'm taking the antiderivative term by term for each of these guys. Plus, let's see, that's how it's done. Let's think of a in a different situation right here. Example five. Now once you've had a proper uh, you know, learning in, in uh, decomposition, the fra partial fraction decomposition, and things will become a lot easier. Right? Now think about they got the x right, over uh, just one of that, those functions we've done earlier, x minus one times x squared plus one, for example. And 
it's not exactly the same one. But so this one here will become just like that, the x over, we're starting out with thinking of that as a a over x minus 1, right? And then plus the x plus c over this, the x squared plus 1. Everybody all good with me on that, okay? okay? And so multiply it in just like that, okay? Making it a times the x squared plus 1, right? Plus and x minus 1 times a the x plus c right? over the LCD. I'm going to look at uh, ax square plus a plus now it is dx square plus cx minus dx minus c okay, all over the LCD. And then, of course, combining the like terms here, I'm looking at uh, a plus b right, or the x square term. The so I have minus b plus c, right? minus b plus c for the x term. And then I have a minus c right? for the constant term, the LCD. And so equating this with the x right, over x minus 1 times x plus 1, I mean x squared plus 1. So now this is what I realized. There's no x squared term in our original numerator, right? So that means we are setting for ourselves a system a plus b right here has to equal zero. Minus b plus c has to equal zero. I mean, actually, that equals one because our x term equals one. And then the a minus c, a minus c equals zero. Well, we'll move that, and then we can we can solve this one again. That. Right. So now. Why don't you guys go ahead and take your time really solving for that uh, system of A, B, and C right there for me. Okay, really that, uh, right from here we can see that A equals C, right? A equals C is easy, yeah, right? And so then for that I'm going to substitute. So for a problem like this, I think it's better to use uh, the substitution method right here. So I'm going to, the system here becomes, uh, see every A in the earlier problem right here, it's going to become a C, so we've got the, uh, B plus C equals zero in the top equation, and then I got minus B plus C right, equals one, okay, and I got A right, equals C. That was good. So in that way, right here, then, then our system becomes. Uh, now I'm going to keep. I'm going to. I mean, sometimes you can also do doing half illumination and half the substitution. If you want. So you know, I'm going to add these two equations here side by side, making it. D to B, you got to cancel it out. Right? So you got 2C equals 1. Right? So minus D plus C equals 1. That's one of them. But you got the 2C equals 1. So that leads to, I think will lead to something as easy as, as, easy as uh, C equals 1 half. Right? And so now minus B plus C equals 1. Right? And, Keep in mind C equals a one half. So you can substitute a one half for C, right? And then A equals C, so A equals a one half as well. You guys agree on that? Right. And so that means here we take one more step right here and solve for that. So B here equals indeed a positive, actually a negative one half, or B A equals a one half, and C equals one half. Okay. So what's good about doing this? So at this point, what I mean now is that once you have found these coefficients, right, then your integral from the beginning, x over a denominator will be in the x minus 1 times the x squared plus 1. Okay. That right here, after, a fraction of, after the partial fraction, you turn that into, see, this part fraction in the beginning turned into a partial, a whole bunch of partial fractions. So the plus 1 was... Uh, so a is one half, so it's one over two x minus one, right? That's a plus fraction for that. Are we good? Right. And then the next one here was b and c was were the linear were the, the, the coefficient for the, the, the linear thing on top of your irreducible part, right? Right. So we're looking at a, a plus, right? 
then minus x plus 1 with all over uh, 2 x squared plus 2. Okay. This is an integral where you got 2 times. Now this board of mine over here, the next step here, I'm going to break it down into two separate integrals. So one of them is, um, is for the 1 over okay, 2 times uh, x minus 1. Dx, and the other one was a plus and then minus x plus one over two x squared plus two dx. Sound good that? Okay. But then with this one right here is even it's still a little bit problematic. Now you can always isolate out the one half in here, so there's the one half coefficient one over x minus one. That will be easy in the next step, right? Just going into a long reduction here. Are we good? This one here is still a little problematic, and it's the way it is for any uh, irreducible uh, quadratic. And that's why I want to bring it in. You see what I mean? But you see, at this point, there's only there's a one constant term and there's an x term, right? So let's separate out it even further. So I'm going to turn that into a minus, because of that minus sign here, so minus an integral, I mean, one half times the integral of x over x squared plus 1. Can I still hear that? Okay. And then the next one here is a 1 over this. So I'm turning that as a plus. And now I have a 1 half in a row of the 1 over the x squared plus 1 dx. So that's just the algebra of how I broke it down into some term. Okay. Any questions? So with that one now, The plus one here goes into a one half, right? Natural log of uh, x minus one. Can you read? Okay. The middle one here, surprisingly, it takes more step, but it's not a hard one. It's not a hard one. It's a what? Uh, we go a little substitution rule over here. Okay. For that one right here, think about we're going to branch out and work here just for that separate one. Minus one half, right? And then the x over x squared plus one. You guys can use a substitution. Equals x squared plus one. So that we do here is a two x, right? Uh, dx, or the dx itself is a u over two x. And that's why now the integral here becomes minus one half, right? The x you can get cancellation, but as an over u here, the dx here becomes the u over two x. So the x here got cancelled, right? The what, the one there. The two in the denominator that brought out, right? so it's negative one fourth, the integral of one over u, the u. And that's making it to negative one fourth of the natural log of u in absolute value, and then we bring back the u, we bring the x squared plus one in there, right? So this term right here becomes all together a, should be a plus and minus, right? Now we're having a one fourth natural log of uh, x squared plus one. So I do, I, I mean, you should write that step in part of your work as well, but kind of keep it spaced out, right, in a separate space, yeah. right? That's how we, we handle the middle term. And the last term here, do you guys remember this? The antiderivative for that one? I mean, what function has 1 over x squared plus 1 as the derivative? Yes, it's the arc tan, right there. The inverse tan is I agree totally. It's now 1 half, right, and the inverse, the arc tan. Now we're done. Okay. So, what's the generality you guys have learned in this problem right here? Especially the problem where it ducks. You know, I purposely brought in this problem right here where it ducks right from the beginning point right here. Your integral got uh, your integral was a rational expression, right? And then it, ha it has linear the, the factors, and then it's also got some irreducible factors, right? So when once you turn that into once you have done your partial fraction decomposition successfully like that, then you can always generally handle you can always generally handle the, that particular fraction that, that, that was on top of your the irreducible quadrant. You can always split it out into two terms. In one term you can you can use the, the, the substitution methods for that. And then the other term it will definitely go into some kind of a inverse tangent. You want to say that? But that's how you handle that particular problem. Right? Okay. Now
Now let me bring you into another one that uh, that will be hand to understanding. So remember from the beginning days, as I mentioned, the, this method for using the using partial fractions, right? You only use that when your numerator has less degree. Say right here in this part, right? Your overall rational function being your integrand right here. The numerator got less degree, right? Got lower degree. That's where you go straight into the get straight into using the, the, the partial fraction decomposition process. Okay? But let me bring in a problem like this. Only when the numerator goes strictly less than, then, then you can use the you can start using the partial fraction decomposition. But what if you have something like this? So example, uh, let's call it example six here. So we want to evaluate something like this. Let's say something like that. Let me go ahead and spend some time writing it down. All right. So for something like this, so we, we note that uh, the numerator, how about the degree of the numerator, is equal to the degree in the denominator. You guys follow it? So this brings a good sign that we don't rush immediately. So let's not rush immediately into the, the, the partial fraction. Let's do that first. So anytime that the numerator has degree equal or higher, right, then, then do this before you do the, the partial fraction. Think about the x squared minus 3 right here over x squared minus 1. You're going to have to do, I mean, there are a couple ways. If, if the algebra can be easy, like say, for example, something like this, you can think of that, this as an x squared minus 1 and minus 2, right? You guys would know that the x squared minus 3 right here is the same as x squared minus 1 minus 2, right? So this is, I'm talking about the algebra is easy. And then x squared minus 1 is your denominator. So you're going to purposely break that down as, as uh, x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1. You guys follow it? And then minus the 2 over x squared minus 1. We, you know that, okay? So we're still breaking it down into multiple terms. That's the ultimate goal right here. But when your degree in the numerator is equal or higher, we got to do some algebra work. So that algebra here turns out into what? It's a 1 here, right? That's making it a 1 minus a 2 over x squared minus 1. That would be. And then this guy now is the one that we're going to apply. We're going to use a use the decomposition process here. Decomposition process here. You see why I'm using the decomposition process here just for that term step? Because that term here got what? Lower degree in the numerator, right? See what I'm saying now? Right. That's the idea. And then let me start it out a little bit. Let me start it out a little bit. So I'm talking about even if you didn't recognize, if you don't recognize the algebra so quickly, you guys got to bring back some of your uh, past understanding a little bit here. But you see, remember how to do long division a little bit? Yeah? I mean, if you don't remember, I don't blame you because long division is such a deadly experience when you were doing the algebra. But now, at, trust me, at this point, when you guys made it this far, in, in Math here, and looking at long division is not is not so bad. So you put that uh, that denominator outside the root, right? And that numerator inside here. Because a, a fraction on its own is in the end it's a division process, right? It's a division process. You guys follow it? Right? So the division, long division process. Here you go. Hey, x squared, right? The first term in the, in the numerator is going to divide by the first term in the denominator, including sign of that. So x squared divided by, by x squared gives you 1. So we look at that. Okay. And then now with 1 right here, I'm going to multiply 1 with that. So 1 multiplied with x squared minus 1 is giving this. And we're going to subtract out. Actually, I'm lying. I shouldn't put it there. 1 multiplied with each term, I put it here, x squared minus 1. And then we do the subtract out. We're good. And subtracting now, with that subtraction, it's going to flip signs and all that, right? So the x here got cancel, and then you got the minus 3 plus 1 here, making it a negative 2. Sounds good. And we call this. And so now we check, hey, is this remainder, this is called a remainder. This is called a remainder. And then we check, hey, is this remainder having degree less than 
that denominator, and it is now less degree, right? This remainder is low degree, so now we know that we stop our own division process. Okay? Are you guys with me on that? Okay, so what does that mean? It means now that your x squared minus 3 over x minus 1, you see the whole point of doing the whole point of doing the division is that this quotient right here came out being that 1, right? And then this remainder is being a minus 2, so minus 2, right? Over it's, it's the remainder, so we leave that as the remaining fraction, the, the, the undivided remaining fraction right here, so x squared minus 1 on top of that. So the answer comes out exactly the same with the other one I've shown. So two, two different ways to, to break down your your fraction in case, your rational expression in case, if it was a numerator on top, equal or higher to the denominator. And so now allow me to get back to this problem right here. So back on this board, what I'm having here is we, we turn that into two terms. So now the integral, you come and think about it. We've had examples earlier regarding to this specific term, right? 2 over x squared minus 1. We have learned that this one here is going to break down into, into a, you know, anyone remember? 1 over x minus 1, right? And minus 1 over x plus 1 right here. We did the, the decomposition process for this particular term before. When I introduced that idea of a partial fraction, decomposition. Okay. So now, after all of that work right here, then we're going we're gonna to solve the integral like this. So x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 1 dx. Right? I'm going to turn that into three separate terms. The first term is 1, right? and then the later two terms are here. But don't worry, I mean, don't forget that we have a negative sign right here. Right? So it flips here, so 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 and plus 1 over x minus 1. x plus 1. We turn the fraction to three separate terms. So it's still in the end, partial fraction. But uh, at some part we use a decomposition process, some other part we, we've got to do the algebra. Okay. Now we're clear, right? The first term goes into x, middle term is minus natural log of x minus 1, and last term is natural log of x plus 1. Let's see. Yeah, now we've done our 